<laughs> Last year, he actually put the lights on there. They don't go off until we either find him or the lights give out. Hey you and welcome. And in this video, we have another tragic disappearance on our hands. This footage is the last anyone has ever seen of Stephen Kocher, who vanished without a trace in 2009 in Henderson, Nevada. The circumstances leading up to Stephen's disappearance are quite mysterious, and he did some things that were pretty out of character for him leading up to December 13th, 2009. Stephen was 30 years old when he disappeared. He was born into a family of Latter-day Saints in 1979. He was described as quite a devout person. He did not drink or do drugs, but he was also a fun-loving guy. He was spontaneous. Stephen had graduated from the University of Utah with a BA in communications, and later worked for the Salt Lake Tribune. He was eventually laid off, and moved to St. George, about 300 miles south of Salt Lake City. In St. George, Stephen struggled to find work. He didn't have any family or friends in the community, he landed a couple of odd jobs, and eventually worked handing out flyers. He also reportedly had a number of financial difficulties. I mean, he had a hard time finding a job, and he was under pressure to pay his rent. In early December 2009, Stephen's landlord called his parents because he had not made a rent payment in three months, and Stephen had stopped returning the landlord's calls. On Wednesday, December 9th, Stephen and his sister talked over the phone. One thing to note is during this conversation, he did not mention any travel plans. Because he's about to have some travel plans that remain unexplained. That night, Stephen talked to his dad on the phone about the rent. But Stephen apparently downplayed the situation. And he seemed to even have been pissed off that the problem of him paying rent was relayed to his parents. The next day, or even that night, Stephen got in his car and he started driving. By around 6.45 a.m. on Thursday morning, Stephen had driven approximately 302 miles and stopped to buy gas in Salt Lake City. This entire trip, it was very strange due to there being absolutely no motive for it at all. He then drove another 200 miles, and from noon until around 2 p.m., Stephen inexplicably stopped at the house of an ex-girlfriend's parents in Ruby Valley. Stephen's excuse for being in the area is that he was on his way to meet family in Sacramento. He has no family in Sacramento. He then talks to his sister again that day by phone. During the entire conversation, he never mentions where he is or anything about a road trip. A few hours later, Stephen spoke with his mom on the phone, and seemed to be in a good mood. He told her he planned to come home for Christmas, and she told him that she had deposited some money into his account for rent. Oh sweet! Problem solved! He never actually uses any of the money she put in his account. He finally returns home at 11pm. In total, Stephen appeared to have driven 1,091 miles. It took him about 20 hours. All for some unknown reason. Very strange given the fact that a few days later he vanishes without a trace. Two days later he buys Christmas gifts for the family as he was planning on returning home. This is very strange as if he was planning on disappearing, why would you buy Christmas presents? Also, the presents were in the car the day he vanished. On the morning of Sunday, December 13th, an associate at the church in St. George, that Stephen was a member of, calls Stephen and asks him to come in around 11am to cover for him. Stephen says that he is currently in Las Vegas, but can drive the two hours back if necessary. The co-worker said don't worry about it, he himself was returning from Las Vegas anyway, so he should be able to make it. He gets two more calls from the church asking him to either cover or if he can make an announcement during service. Sheesh, talk about demanding. He tells them both he is in Las Vegas, 
Well, he actually is in Henderson, but it's, yeah, it's practically the same place. Then that afternoon, Stephen's car is caught on home security footage, passing a residence. A male figure is seen in the security footage, walking up the road. Another camera also recorded Stephen. The next we know is that his voicemail was checked the next morning. And that's the last activity that there is. Stephen was reported missing on December 17th. The last we know of where Stephen was is due to the pings from cell towers. Although he parked his car in a nice retirement neighborhood, the last ping to his phone was way to the north of that in a pretty sketchy neighborhood. We have no idea why he was there. The mysterious road trip he made has never been explained, and he never mentioned it to anyone. One of the most prevalent theories regarding Stephen's disappearance is that he decided to disappear, either by committing suicide or running away. The major source of support for this theory is that Stephen was in debt and experiencing pressure financially. Members of his family have said that Stephen was somewhat unhappy with his current circumstances and have suggested that he could have been depressed. As days go by, I, you know, I start thinking about suicide. You know, I think he, you know, he was pretty uh, in a rough state of his life, you know. But, but buying Christmas presents before you vanish is an odd thing to do. We see Christmas presents in the car. So somebody who is thinking about this, you know, in my mind, isn't trying to disappear. And if Stephen did commit suicide, who checked his voicemail the next morning? Why did he leave his car in one neighborhood and then walk all the way north to a sketchier one? Stephen had no known connection to the neighborhood where his car was found. Many people seem to believe that Stephen became, perhaps unknowingly, involved in some kind of money-making scam or lucrative short-term work. This is supported by the fact that Stephen, when observed in the surveillance video, he leaves his car and heads out just before 12 noon local time, almost as if he had an appointment. It certainly seems as though the man in the video was walking to a specific house or to an unseen waiting car. Could Stephen have met with foul play while in Henderson? My working theory is that he thought he was going to something there, like an interview, an opportunity, and something went terribly wrong. One Redditor came up with an interesting theory which supports this. I think he got a job delivering foreclosure notices through Craigslist or other websites. I could be wrong, but I believe when people are hired to deliver foreclosure notices in person, it's not as full employees but as independent contractors. It's all kind of sketchy. He didn't tell anyone because he may have been ashamed of the job and also didn't want to tell everyone he was working only to get humiliated again with another layoff. Income from this employment would also explain why he wasn't using the money given to him by his parents. This was at the height of the recession and Las Vegas was hit very hard by it. This would also explain why he went on a rather bizarre long drive in the days before his disappearance. He was delivering notices of foreclosure to people. He was there in Las Vegas to hand deliver a foreclosure notice and came across a particularly violent homeowner. And when you deliver them, it's always better to park down the street and walk up to the residence. The sound of the car driving up and the door shutting and the driver walking right up to the house all of that puts the already on edge homeowner in a state of alert. People are much more likely to come to the door when they are surprised by a knock or bell without any noise from a parking car. Stephen was killed by some angry hothead who reached his last straw. I would investigate the foreclosure history of every house in that area, as well as police records for all owners for a violent past. Could that be what happened to Stephen Kocher? It's certainly a possibility. 
but what remains is we still have no idea of his whereabouts or even if he is alive 10 years later. Thanks for watching, I'll see you real soon, as always, in the next video. Mike out.